Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. How stupid can you be? Well, Adam Meekin, Nathan Oakley, and Anthony Riley are about to redefine stupid for us. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range. Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Hey, three dumbbells for the price of one. It's not gonna get a lot better than that. You know, Nathan Oakley's crew have been claiming for months now that they've debunked the radius of the Earth. Huh? Right, Houston. Right. They use this thing they call the black swan. It's this image in the upper left with extreme refraction. It's taken from a beach in California, just a few feet above the water. And on that particular day with that amount of refraction, you can see the oil rigs, not very clearly, but you can see them, and they're loomed up. On a normal day, you see the image on the lower right, where the horizon is clearly obstructing large portions of those same oil rigs. Black Swan, I don't think so, guys. More like a dead duck. All those pictures prove is that trying to measure the radius of the Earth like this is just silly. This is not how the Earth's radius is measured. The oldest method was a method used by a guy named Eratosthenes in about 250 BC. Eratosthenes did it by measuring the length of the shadow of a stick. Bob the Science Guy and I did this at the Equinox oh, about two years ago. I used a 73 inch pole and got a radius of 3958.8 miles. That's pretty much exactly what the Earth's radius is. But that's not the reason we're here today. Here lately, the main thing you hear coming out of Nathan Oakley and that crowd is, you're gonna need R for that. They seem to be seeing R's in their sleep. Well, listen up. Now these nitwits mistake R in the universal law of gravitation for the radius of the earth. It's unbelievable. Talking to you, John. No, I've just based it off what Anthony said, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Did she stomp out this or any of the other arguments that were had with a request for R? To be honest, 90% of the show was about Einstein, Newton, gravity, and F equals MA. So they never really departed from that topic. There was an end, there was an end to it, but there was only a limited small amount of time at the end afterwards. So she, they, they didn't really get past it. So no. Hmm. I, did, I did notice, Tony, if you can put the picture back up with like the flat earth and his little uh, bit of mass but um he does need r if you look at the picture he puts r in there there it is look r squared yep yeah so you're gonna need r for that chunky that's newton's universal law of gravitation you bonehead adam the r in that equation is not the radius of anything. It's the distance between the centers of the two masses. Come on, guys, jump in and help him out. He's already shot himself in both feet. It's funny because he... he yeah, I think... Uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that I think what Nathan did uh, when uh, with that one guy about uh, debating cats, demanding that they give R before the de debate happens, I think that's where flat earthers need to be at. We need, like, if you're wanting to debate somebody, they need to have R before they can beg the question. Yeah, I don't think Rachie Five Zeros watches the show enough. She might pass by periodically, but she's she's definitely not up to up to date. But um, the, the, these people won't they won't listen to anything that she says. When she gets them cornered, they will apply ta tactics to get out of it at all costs. So, for example, he brought Hillbilly Blue Balls in to talk about his Cavendish experiment that he repeated. And basically, um, it, it is a parlor trick. And he was asking, she'd cited that phrase, it's a parlor trick. It's not a parlor trick. It's mass attracting mass. We see that everywhere in nature. The independent variable is the distance between the centers of the two masses. And the dependent variable is the amount of deflection in the torsion balance. And then they were trying to pin her on exactly why was it a parlor trick. And I was, I was in my head, I was thinking she's going to come up with like, there's no valid observed phenomena, no hypothesis, no IVDV. 
and basically they did get her cornered because she didn't she didn't give an answer to it when challenged. But if that had been anybody else that spat out, where's the IV? Where's the DV? Where's the hypothesis? They wouldn't have got away with like refuting their claim that it was just words that she was spewing or words to that effect, because that is essentially what they managed to show, and that's because she's not up to date with the flat earth debate, rate G. Well, I will plug my own show and advise everyone to share, etc. But I do want um, Tenth Man to just read out his comment that he typed himself in the Skype chat. Can you just read out what you just put, Tenth? Yeah, this is uh, Ayn Rand's statement. You can avoid reality, but you cannot avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. No, and want, it just... no, no. I want you no, to no, read I'm, what you yeah, wrote. No. Read what you wrote. That's... I am. I am. I'm transitioning. So I wrote, you can avoid R but you cannot avoid the consequences of avoiding R. Perfect. Thank you very much. The greatest fairy tale in the world, and it ends the moment you ask them where they got the radius from. That's the point in that maths, John, that I was saying. They, they, they've gone very clever on Rachie there. They've, they've gone straight to mathematics and done a nice bit of deriving and jiggling and re reorganizing the formula. But fundamentally... They've put an R in there, and she can reject it at that point, yeah, unless Nathan demands, where do you get your R first? If you're going to use it in summit, I think it's perfectly reasonable in 2021, if we're going to use a constant in, in a formula, that it's validatable, that constant, and it's fundamental if you're going to use uh, that, that bit of maths that you have to use R, uh, therefore, it's perfectly reasonable to define it. And if you can't verify it, then there's no point carrying on uh, with the derivation because it's just not based in reality. It's just numbers. I don't know, Adam. Either the rest of those guys are as stupid as you are or they just hung you out to dry. Have you been taking lessons from Sleeping Warrior about how to Google things like, for instance... Leon Foucault. You can't calculate a force into existence mathematically. You need an interaction that makes something accelerate, not a calculation. Something, of, you need a verb. You need a doing, something that's doing, you need a verb to do that, not a calculation. So that, that point then got successfully obfuscated so that they couldn't, they, they weren't made to answer the question, well, what made Cavendish's blue, hillbilly blue balls Cavendish test? What made his balls accelerate? Gravity, Anthony. That's what made him accelerate. Gravity, just exactly like Newton said. You know, I think all of you guys are destined to have wax statues installed in this fine institution. And I'll tell you what, I may even come to see it myself. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. As always, thanks so much for what you do. And I guess I'll see you guys later.